Hi friends, this is Sue Betty from the Bluebird Tavern in Burlington, Vermont. TEND, Exploring the Vermont Foodscape, is a series of video postcards from the many farmers, cheesemakers, brewers, bakers, and other businesses that supply our restaurant with incredible local ingredients. This is a story about how dozens of creative and hardworking people are making a living by producing truly excellent regional products. Well, hi, this is Sue from Bluebird Tavern in Burlington, Vermont. I'm down here at uh, Red Hen Baking Company in Middlesex, Vermont, with uh, our friend Randy. Hello. We've been in business for uh, 11 and a half years. My wife, Liza Kane, and I uh, own this business. We started in, over in Duxbury in 99, and then three and a half years ago, we moved here to Middlesex, and um, that gave us the opportunity to have the cafe that we have now. But the core of our business is uh, wholesale bread production and delivery. We bake uh, certified organic breads seven days a week and deliver them uh, around most of the state. About your style of bread and what you do? Yeah, these are uh, hearth baked, naturally leavened, many of them are naturally leavened. All of them are long fermented breads, um, which means that they, they have a pre-ferment, which is, a, which is a, a quantity of flour and water that is allowed to uh, ferment for as much as 15 hours, but in most cases about six or seven hours before putting it into the final dough. And this gives it, this gives the breads a lot more uh, flavor and a chewy texture, and it allows us to uh, make a really tasty bread just with flour, water, and salt. For the most part, these these breads um, they might have a little bit of yeast, um, but they we we use for the most part those four basic ingredients, and then we alter the texture and the flavor by uh, mostly through different fermentation processes. We use five different starters, um, and many of those are natural starters, which means that there's a combination of wild yeast and beneficial bacteria, and we maintain that culture regularly. So um, keeping track of that uh, and, and attending to that is a really big part of what we do. Uh, and then um, they're all hearth-baked as well, which means that there's a, we'll look at that in a little bit, the, the stone hearth um, that, the, that the bread's baked directly on, and that's, that's got a lot of thermal mass, and so when the breads hit that, hit that oven, they, they spring a whole lot. This is the way that breads were, the, the very first breads that were, that were ever made were, were baked, and this, uh, what at that time, of course, was a, was a primitive way of doing things. We have a modern version of, of that hearth, hearth oven. Go one here, but this one here is the, is the Cyrus Pringle, this is the, uh, the one that has uh, entirely, is made entirely with Vermont grown ingredients and 85% um, uh, unbleached wheat flour, organic unbleached wheat flour milled from, by Champlain Valley Mills in Westport, New York from wheat grown at Aurora Farms in Charlotte. Um, it's a, this, we, we named it Cyrus Pringle after the renowned wheat breeder and botanist who was born in Charlotte, same place most of the wheat that was, that's in this bread. Uh, was grown, and um, that just seemed so fitting. Um, but he's also, even to this day, considered a very important person in the world of, of wheat breeding. Um, anybody, <laughs> anybody who's a wheat breeder <laughs> considers Cyrus Pringle uh, a very important character. This is the Waitsfield Common, a bread that we've made for years. Um, sort of the closest thing we might do to a sourdough, although it's not, as I was saying before, not, not particularly sour, uh, because these are the European style of, of sourdoughs. Uh, the French would call it a levain. And um, this, this is made mostly with unbleached wheat flour. There's a little bit of a, little bit of a, of a less refined flour in the starter. Um, and this is a naturally leavened bread. There's just flour, water, and salt. This one is our panel levain, um, particularly exciting to me because 90% um, of the flour in here is uh, something called turkey turkey wheat. It's an heirloom wheat that was actually the wheat that the Mennonites, the, the Mennonite settlers uh, in the late 1800s brought to Kansas. Previous to that time, Kansas had not really been a wheat, wheat growing state. And it was turkey wheat that did very well there. It was similar, uh, the, the climate was similar enough to the uh, Crimea, which is the area that, that those settlers had come from, uh, that it, that it uh, took off very well there in Kansas. And within, within a decade, Kansas was, was planted throughout the state with wheat, 
and, um, and, then, and this was the turkey wheat was the predominant wheat that was grown there for about 40 years and then in the 20s and 30s it, it um, started to change to where there were, there were new varieties of wheats that were breeded but they even to this day all the winter wheat that's grown in Kansas has some of the genetics of turkey wheat in there and there have been a few farmers that have kept this this flame alive so to speak and, uh, and then in the last couple of years a mill that started milling uh, exclusively ju just the turkey wheat into a, into a special product that's been boarded on the slow food arc of taste um, which preserves endangered foods of all types all over the world. Um, so 90% of that is uh, two different flours that are milled from turkey wheat in this naturally leavened panel of van and then 10% um, of, the, of the wheat is Ben Gleason's um, whole wheat. So this is a this is a slightly weedy bread. You'll see here uh, as as we uh, want in all of our uh, nearly all of our breads this this irregular uh, whole structure um, and a nice dark caramelized crust. Um, all the breads are baked in a hearth oven, which is steam injected. They go they go into the hearth oven and they and they're immediately exposed to a hundred percent humidity environment and that allows them to spring but it also gelatinizes the crust on the outside and so that these sugars can be caramelized and this is the one that has uh, a whole variety of it has uh, four different grains and three different seeds america does seem to have a real fascination with uh with multi-grain breads um and um we, we haven't always made this one but we kept hearing about uh it was about five or six years in uh, we kept hearing requests for multi-grain bread um, so we started making this, and it is very suitable for um, sandwiches and, of course, toast. Of course, we make baguettes. We make two different types of baguettes, seeded and, and the traditional the seeded one, which you wouldn't find in France. This is a very American thing. We're not the only ones that make seeded baguettes, but this has sesame seeds, poppy seeds, and a few fennel seeds on it, uh, all entirely or, uh, uh, or organic seeds in that mixture. And then, and then the baguette, which is, which is more traditional. Um, and is meant to have, uh, as is usually the case, an open crumb, and we like to, we like to sort of check how we're doing uh, with that open crumb by, by uh, slicing it open. We want to see this, this kind of whole structure mm, that looks great. Uh, throughout. This is our 100% whole wheat bread in the, in the uh, form that we, that we sell it to restaurants, um, and then in the stores, it's, it's, it's a round loaf. 100% whole wheat and uh, continually amazes me how, how good that one is because the, um, and, and I really have to, have to credit the flour, uh, which is com comes from a, a mill in Quebec. I've never worked with a whole wheat flour that, that performs as well as that. And for a whole wheat bread, actually gets fairly light. It's dark in color, but, but fairly light in, um, in texture. And we get that uneven uh, crumb structure that we, that we were just discussing for the, that we look for. In, most of our breads and it's unusual to get that with a whole wheat bread. This will happen uh, regularly. A restaurant will have a particular need for something and um, as long as the quantity is there you know it's usually fun for us to to do something a little bit different and there's we have you know it's gotten up to the point now where we have like even though we make uh, about 15 different types of bread we make about 90 different individual products out of those 15 types of bread you know when you get when you add up all of the different shapes and sizes and most of those variations have come about because somebody like bluebird called up and they said well this is exactly this is what we need you know we, we needed a little the bag got a little bit narrower so it's fun to do that usually you know one of the things like in running a restaurant there's always something new every day but sometimes it seems to be kind of like the same old thing and you have to figure out ways to stay inspired mm -hmm. do you all kind of have that here or what keeps you going and what keeps you active? Well, it's been really fun. I mean, bread is kind of an alive thing and it changes every day, so you have to really pay attention to like hydrations and, and temperature and all that stuff. So there's a lot to, that, that is alive about it every day, but um, you know, it's exciting to de develop new breads and, and that sort of thing, but we can't just keep adding more and more breads. There's not enough room on the shelves and um, we have to limit ourselves somehow. So it's been really nice for Randy to work with farmers and and develop the wheats that we can grow and mill into flour right here in Vermont. So that's a really fun tangent to go on and keep that excitement alive, um, working with those farmers and branching out that way. And in the cafe, that's mm -hmm. a little 
Yeah, that's that, a new thing. That, that, yeah. That'll keep things yeah. exciting. Yeah. <laughs> Now, when you were talking with the farmers about the wheat varieties, did you actually get a chance to go out to the fields and actually mm -hmm. experience yeah. that? And what yeah. was that like? Oh, you know, it's... Because I would imagine a lot of our, even artisanal bakers, they don't see oh, the flour. Oh, not at all. Know. I mean, that's very unusual. You know, flour uh, is mostly, wheat is mostly grown in the Midwest uh, in this country, and um, it's produced on such a scale, uh, and it's so readily available that um, it's not really appreciated, you know, the, the source of it isn't really appreciated. So it was a very, it was a really uh, revelatory experience for me the day we, we drove the truck to uh, Aurora Farms to get the first load of flour. Now, now we have an arrangement where the truck brings it to us, but uh, it was pretty exciting to drive to the farm where it was grown and buy the flour from him and, uh, and, and haul it back here. Um, it, it's it's really neat to see, and it's fun. I haven't gotten on the combine yet, but uh, I've been there when the when the uh, wheat was nearly ready to be harvested, and uh, we haven't our timing hasn't worked out that I was free to to go uh, get on the combine. But that's something I really would like to do, and hopefully we'll be able to do it this Company, year. And we're but located I, in Middlesex, Vermont, but you can find us in co-ops and grocery stores and the variety of great restaurants all over Vermont. We have a cafe here in Middlesex where you can join us for a meal. And uh, we also can be uh, found at www.redhenbaking.com. And we do have a Facebook page.